Welcome to the Power Integrations course, Fixing a Flyback Supply, which does not deliver full power. Before starting this course, you should have built a flyback power supply and identified through the bring-up procedure that the output doesn't deliver full power when a load is applied. The power supply should start up without entering auto restart and should be able to regulate output voltage with no load and very light loads applied. During this course, you will need the following equipment a programmable AC source, or variac, a DMM, an electronic load, an oscilloscope with one high voltage probe, and a current probe. Common causes for a power supply to be unable to deliver full power and thus enter auto restart are, on a multiple output design, one or more output diodes are reversed, the transformer primary inductance doesn't match specification, a smaller power integrations device was installed on the board, the power integrations device current limit is programmed incorrectly. The power integrations device switching frequency is set incorrectly. The input bulk capacitor value is too low. The clamp, bias, or output diodes are damaged. The output diode or bias winding diode reverse recovery time is too long. Or the drain node capacitance is too high. If your design provides multiple outputs, first check that all the output diodes have been inserted in the correct orientation. If not, remove them from the board and replace them with new components before retesting your design. Next, verify that the transformer primary inductance value matches that specified in your PI Expert design results. Power transferred in a flyback transformer is proportional to 1 half L I squared F, where L is the primary inductance value, I is the effective peak primary current, and F is the switching frequency. For discontinuous conduction mode designs, I is equal to the peak primary current. For continuous conduction mode designs, the effective peak primary current is equal to the difference of the initial current squared and the peak current squared during the MOSFET on time. In this equation, we see that if the primary inductance is significantly lower than the minimum value specified, it will limit the power transferred to the output. If it's too high, the transformer may saturate. The turn on current pedestal might exceed the initial current limit after the leading edge blanking time. Or, depending on the device family you're using, the maximum duty cycle may terminate the cycle before the primary current reaches the required level. In all cases, this prevents full power transfer to the output, which leads to loss of regulation. This causes the power integrations device to enter auto restart. Also check the polarity of your transformer windings. If one has been reversed, it will appear as a forward winding. This prevents the supply from operating as a flyback converter, limiting power transfer to the output. Next, make sure that the correct power integrations device was assembled into your board. All devices of the same package in a power integrations family share identical pinouts and functional operation. They differ only in the size of the MOSFET used, their respective current limits, and power capability. For this reason, if a smaller device of the same family is accidentally used, the power supply will still operate, but it won't be able to deliver the full output power. If you find that the wrong device has been populated on your board, replace it with the correct one and retest your design. Many power integrations device families allow user programmable current limits. For example, varying the X-pin resistor used for a top switch HX design allows the user to program a lower current limit for the device. Verify that the current limit was programmed correctly in your design by confirming that the programming capacitor or resistor value matches those specified by PI Expert. For power integrations devices that allow for external programming of the switching frequency, Make sure that the correct frequency was programmed for your design. The frequency programmed should match that used in the transformer design results of PI Expert. If the switching frequency is lower than specified by PI Expert, it will limit power transfer to the output. If it's higher than specified, the change in the primary current wave shape can trigger initial current limit. With the high voltage probe connected between the DC bus and the bolt capacitor negative terminal, Measure the voltage ripple across the bolt capacitor. Confirm that the lowest voltage measured in the ripple trough is equal to or greater than the minimum DC voltage specified in PI Expert. 
If this voltage is too low, it will limit the power transfer capabilities of the supply. As the DC bus voltage reduces, the required peak primary current will increase. When the required current exceeds the device current limit, the supply will lose regulation and then enter auto restart mode. If you find the minimum voltage on the DC bus is too low, first check that all of the diodes in the AC rectifier bridge have been soldered properly into the board. If a diode hasn't been soldered in, or has failed open circuit, this will convert the bridge to a half-wave rectifier. Replace any damaged or incorrectly installed diodes and retest your design. Next, check that the input capacitor value used on your board matches that specified in the PI Expert design. If the value is too small, the capacitor won't store enough energy and the ripple on the DC bus will increase. If any one of the output, bias, or clamp diodes is beginning to fail, it may cause the power supply to intermittently enter auto restart when loaded. Replace each of these components, one at a time, and retest your design. If replacing one of these diodes fixes the problem, then measure its temperature at the lowest AC input voltage while the supply is at full load. If the diode is running too hot, resolve this issue before continuing. For the next test, we'll need to monitor the drain switching voltage and current. Break the MOSFET drain trace on your board and insert a wire current loop to monitor drain current. Connect a high voltage oscilloscope probe from the drain node to the source pins to measure the switching voltage across the MOSFET. Also connect the current probe on the current loop you just made. Set the voltage to either the input voltage at which the power delivery problem occurred or, if this is unknown, to the lowest AC input voltage specified for your design. Set the output load to zero and turn on your supply. Configure your oscilloscope to view both the MOSFET voltage and current and set it to trigger on the rising edge of the MOSFET voltage to ensure stable readings. Now, slowly increase the output loading until you reach the highest load the supply can deliver without entering auto restart. If you go past this point and the supply drops into auto restart, reduce your load until normal operation is reached and try again. Under these conditions, measure the initial current turn-on spike which occurs when the MOSFET is switched on. This spike is normal in switching power supplies. It may be caused by output diode or bias winding diode reverse recovery times, drain node capacitance, and snubbers across the MOSFET or transformer windings. Power integrations devices incorporate leading edge blanking, which disables the current limit for a fixed period immediately following MOSFET turn on. This prevents the initial current spike from triggering the current limit and prematurely terminating the switching cycle. However, if the turn-on spike is larger than normal, it can trigger the initial current limit of the device and cause it to limit power transfer to the output. The leading edge blanking time in your design and the initial current limit at the end of leading edge blanking can be found in the datasheet for your device. Next, measure the current level you see through the MOSFET at the end of the leading edge blanking time. Compare this value with the initial current limit in the datasheet. If the value you measure is greater than the initial current limit, then this may be the source of your power delivery problems. If you don't notice a problem at this line voltage, then increase your input voltage to the maximum line voltage for your design and retest. Turn on current spikes are largest at high line voltages because parasitics are charged to and discharged from higher voltages. For example, here's an RD142 design in which extra capacitance has been added across the transformer primary winding. When tested here at 265 volts AC and full load, the power supply enters auto restart. We can see that the turn on spike occasionally triggers initial current limit, causing an extremely brief pulse of conducted current because the switching cycle has been terminated. If you see this behavior in your design, first ensure that only ultra-fast recovery or shock heat diodes are being used for the output rectifiers. Using slow recovery diodes will increase reverse recovery current. This current flows backwards into the secondary winding, is transformed through the turns ratio back to the primary, and increases the initial turn-on spike seen by the MOSFET. If your bias winding diode has a long reverse recovery time, try replacing it with a 1N4937 rectifier. If this solves the problem, then refer to PI Expert to verify that the bias winding diode you've used matches the specifications given. If it doesn't, then replace your bias winding diode with the one recommended by PI Expert.
Next, remove all snubbers from your design and retest. If this solves your problem, reduce the capacitance value used in your snubbers or increase the series resistor value until the initial current spike is below the datasheet limit. If the snubbers don't affect the initial current spike, measure the transformer primary capacitance. If the transformer capacitance is high, verify it was dip varnished and not vacuum impregnated. Varnishing a transformer with vacuum impregnation can significantly increase its primary winding capacitance. Thank you for attending the course, Fixing a Flyback Supply, which does not deliver full power. If you have any comments or questions, please email piuniversity at powerint.com.